everyone welcome to practically we bring learning alive so now uh, what we have decided in our channel is that we are going to do a lot of work okay for neat neat is there on 17th of july till now what we know is neat is there till 17 in on 17th of july so what i decided is why not go through some topics from where a lot of question comes okay so particular particular topics only we'll take not everything because right now it's like an emergence kind of a thing okay so we'll take some very like very uh, topics which will from where questions tend to come every year okay or at least every two years every five years they'll come okay so we'll take those topics only we'll take some pyqs we'll take some extra questions also and we'll try to solve them but before that we'll see what is there okay what topics are there and what you have to read what you have to go through okay so with that let's just start the previous class was on the living world that is the first that is the first chapter which is there in 11th ncrt book this the next chapter is about kingdom planting okay so we're talking about can kingdom plant a but before that we'll talk about the other things okay the lower organisms okay we'll talk about organisms such as monera just a second okay okay so we'll talk about monera we we'll talk about protista and we we'll talk about fungi so this was just before kingdom animalia kingdom plantae and then we'll go to kingdom animalia see questions do come from everywhere it's not that we get to decide where the questions are coming from but some topics are more important than the others okay for example if you take the physiology part or in humans that is very very important and of course we'll do that also but let's just go through in a way that you can follow it up easily okay so let's start now as i said we talk about monera we talk about protista and we talk about fungi okay so before i start up talking about monera protista fungi what you have to uh, like know is that the classification so in the previous classes we talked up talked about ta taxonomy okay we talked we talked about hierarchies kingdom phylum class or uh, and everything like that but but you have to understand there are around 1.7 to 1.8 million species in the world okay so now everything you cannot put it in plants and everything you cannot put it in animals okay because all different different characteristics all different different uh, like they look different they live differently their characteristics are different they behave differently they eat different things so you cannot just put anything in plants or in anything in animals right so that is why we need something called classification okay so classification okay so before i go into classification i would like to tell a little bit of a story okay so aristotle was there in he was living bc before christ okay so what happened one day aristotle was a philosopher okay he used to he used to think about a lot of stuff so aristotle once he was thinking okay why is that that we divide we are like different there are so many organisms okay but all organisms differently behave differently so he thought okay there are plants also and we are animals also all living things but all behaving differently so that is where the idea of classification started okay it was a long after that that we actually went on to go for classification and stuff but it was actually that idea that notion was actually started with the help of aris totle okay so it started with aristotle but finally a person came and he actually started dividing the organisms that person was cadalus cadalus linnaeus okay so this person he said okay let's just divide we know that there are other, all different different kinds of organisms we know that there are they are all different so why not just divide them so this person cadalus linnaeus sir cadalus linnaeus he divided the organisms into plants and animals that's all he did see science is developed very late that time what we are talking about is 1735 
okay so that was very long back and science was not developed as now it is science was not developed during that time so that is why what he did was he just divided into vegetabilia or and animalia okay vegetabilia and animalia it's basically plants and animals they divided okay so let's see what happened so billions of years of evolution have led to the mind numbing variety of species on earth classification of this organisms was a serious challenge okay so we know that now there are many researchers after uh, this person Carolus Linnaeus there were a lot of people started talking about okay it's not just animals or it's not just plants okay there are other organisms also there are microorganisms also which we cannot see with the help of naked eye but we can, help, uh, we can see it with the help of microscopes etc so there are n number of species we cannot just keep it at plants and animals it's just divided so what happened this person so Ernest Haeckel in the year 1866 he divided it into protista plantae animalia so protista was basically a simpler format what he put what he did he took all bacteria virus not virus virus is another story we'll talk about virus later so what he took was he took the uh, what he took the bacteria he took the fungi he took the protista and everything he put it together in the form of protista but that was wrong. In their case, it was okay. Because science has still not developed in the 1800s, 1900s. So, for that case, they put everything in protest. Now, another person came, Sir Shatton, 1937. He divided it into prokaryota and eukaryota. So, we know about prokaryotes and eukaryotes. What happened is, prokaryotes are simple cells. Very simple there are no complications in this kind of cells. Okay, there are no complications whatsoever. It's just a kind of a DNA nucleic acid floating in a cell and it's just floating there, that's all. Okay, and they have a simple capsid, no special organelles. And then there is eukaryota, very complicated, all different, different kinds. There is proper genetic material, DNA, RNA. There are proper organelles, okay? Some have chloroplasts doing, uh, producing food. Some do not have chloroplasts. Some have other things, etc. So, that becomes eukaryota. Eukaryota is a bit complicated. Hope you can see it. Okay. So, what happened? He divided it into prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Now comes another person. Sir Copeland. So he divided it into Monera, Protista, Plantae, Animalia. So now he said, okay, protest, eukaryotes, prokaryotes are there. But let's just divide, let's just put prokaryotes in one section. And after that, because eukaryotes are so complicated, you cannot put all the eukaryotes in just one classification. No, eukaryotes being, we are also eukaryotes, plants are also eukaryotes. We cannot just put everyone together. So that is why you have to put Monera, Protista, Plantae, and So Monera is basically prokaryotes. Okay. Finally, finally, this guy came. Whitaker, Sir Whitaker. Okay. So modern day taxonomy of has accepted five kingdom classification, which was proposed by W. H. Whitaker. Uh, sorry, R. H. Whitaker. Okay. Sir R. H. Whitaker. What he did is still now being used, although there were other developments also, but what he did is still being used. So what he did see, Monera, Protista, Fungi, Plantae, Animalia. So he said, let's see, there is another, we have put Protista, we have, we have put Fungi in the levels of Protista also, but they're totally different. Fungi has a totally different structure when, it, when it's being compared to Protistas. Or pro uh, and everything else. So that is why they put a different section for fungi. And till now, although there are a bit of differentiations done where eukaryote, uh, sorry, uh, the monera has been again divided into archibacteria, eubacteria, and all that. But still, till now, this is the one which is being used. Okay, so as I said, again, they divided it for Sir Vos. In 1977, he divided into you bacteria and archibacteria. But uh, we, have to, we do take that in consideration. But the idea, original idea, original idea was supported by uh, R.H. Whitaker, and we take that only. Okay, so let's move. Okay, so this is how this is 
how the whole uh, the kingdom looks okay the classification looks this is how it looks okay so we have we'll start with monera 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 is basically the bacterial bacterial life all different different kinds of bacteria comes under monera then protista protista is basically protozoa algae and algae and all that all the algae is still under consideration that we sometimes we feel algae should be in plant kingdom because they have a lot of common factors and everything still normally we take protozoas and diatoms and everything for protista now comes fungi totally different from protozoa the structure the whole structure is different the uh, uh, reproduction the whole reproduction part is different how they take up food all the nutrition everything is different okay that is why we had to put a different section for fungi okay then we know plants and animals plants and animals we discuss in the next class because it's a huge thing so plants and animals we discuss in the next class okay so the classification living organisms according to bitteger is divided into five as i said monera protista fungi plantae and algae okay so today we are going to do talk about monera protista and fungi and we'll solve some little bit of questions also okay so this is how the monera looks monera is basically the bacteria okay so this is how it looks they are prokaryotes okay so why am i saying prokaryotes why is prokaryotes are so different than eukaryotes you just look at it okay nothing is there no organelles apart from some ribosomes over here there are some ribosomes over here apart from that none of none of the important things such as vacuoles endoplasmic reticulum a proper nucleus with a proper covering okay uh, what else endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies nothing is there okay it's just some dna material some some genetic material is floating in the cytoplasm there is a flagella for movement okay some granules and a flagella pili and everything this is flagella is for movement pili is for uh, sexual reproduction purposes and everything okay and there is cytoplasm plasma membrane cell wall capsule layer just these are just the coverings there is no such things such as there are no special organelle cover organelles and everything which can do some high fi level stuff no nothing is there okay so let's see monera is considered as the most primitive group of organisms proto prokaryotes no they are not developed they are underdeveloped so uh, what it is it is the most underdeveloped most primitive kind of cell okay and it generally comprises unicellular organisms with a prokaryotic cell organization which i've already said now what else they lack well defined cell structure there is no well defined cell structure including nucleus and other cell organelles no cell organelles cell organelles only ribosome nothing else okay and there's no proper structure or anything they do have capsid and uh, membranes and stuff but it's all very superficial it's not properly described okay and they consist of prokaryotes which include species like cyanobacteria archaebacteria mycoplasma and bacteria are a few members of this kingdom mycoplasma is the smallest okay mycoplasma in this level mycoplasma is the most smallest type of living organism but but be aware of mycoplasma because mycoplasma is one thing which can cause a lot of diseases okay a lot of diseases are being caused by mycoplasma okay so moving on monera where are they present they are both aerobic and an aerobic environment so sometimes they take oxygen aerobic basically means that they accept oxygen they respire through oxygen they get gen energy and everything with the help of oxygen now anaerobic mostly carbon dioxide methanogens they do not require oxygen they do not require oxygen okay so they have rigid cell walls while some do not as i said it's not proper it's not properly described okay some bacteria they have proper cell wall some bacteria they do not have proper cell wall and everything so it's not properly described okay so the membrane bound nucleus is absent in monerans 
that's what I said. They have primitive nucleus. They have primitive genetic material, which is just floating in the cytoplasm. Okay. And habitat, where do they live? It is found everywhere. Starting from thermal springs, deep ocean floor, under ice, deserts, everywhere. De uh, bacteria everywhere, even in your gut. Okay, even in your intestines, you have helpful bacteria. So bacteria, you can do, you can do a, no, a very nice thing. What you can do is you take a petri plate, put some nutrients in it, some nutrient agar kind of a thing, and just take the bacteria and just take the petri plate and hold it in the air. air. Okay, just hold it in the air and you can literally just hold it in the air and then you pack it, the petri plate, keep it in an incubator. Okay, very simple experiment. Keep it in an incubator. Nothing you have done. You've just held it in the air for some 10-15 minutes and you kept it in the incubator. Next day, I guarantee you, there'll be a lot of bacteria in that petri plate. Why? Because there's bacteria all over air, water, desert, sand, wherever you go, you'll find some. Okay, some 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 kind of bacteria you'll find. Okay, so do this do this experiment and you can actually check if bacteria is present anywhere. Starting from your water, milk, you take anything, you take anything as an experiment specimen, you'll find a lot of bacteria over there. Okay, so they can be autotropic because they can synthesize their own food, while some are heterotropic. Saprotropic, parasitic, symbiotic, commensal, elastic, mutualistic, they can be anything. There are so many examples, there are so many kinds of species, so they can be anything. They can sometimes they can make their own food. Okay, such as cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria can make their own food. Apart from that, the some they depend on somebody else, some depend, some need a host, some it's a mutualistic reaction or anything. Okay. So Different, different bacteria, different, different types of nutrition. Okay. And locomotion is with the help of flagella. This thing, this is a flagella and they locomote, like they move with the help of this. Okay. Next. So kingdom monera, what happens is, this is how they reproduce. Okay. The reproduction is, this is asexual reproduction. That is binary fission. Okay, so this is binary fission. I'll tell you. Okay, and this is sexual reproduction. All the sexual reproduction no, is mostly used in different formats. Sexual reproduction is mostly seen in a format such as what to say, such as uh, like in genetic experiments, genetic biochemistry, genetic experiments, and genetic engineering experiments, etc. And all that. That kind of time, you can see sexual reproduction most most almost most of the bacteria they actually go through this binary fission okay so binary fission we have read about binary fission from so long 10 standard 9 standard we have read about binary fission it's very simple what happens there's the mother cell first what happens the genetic element replicates itself the genetic e elements it replicates then it forms a cleavage in between in the cytoplasm it forms a cleavage finally it breaks off and forms two daughter cells. Okay, so there is one daughter, one mother cell which divides into two daughter cells is known as binary fission. Okay, circulation is through diffusion. We know this respiration is through obligate anaerobes which re require oxygen. Okay, some are obligate anaerobes do not cannot grow in oxygen. They need carbon dioxide, methane, etc. Okay, and facultative anaerobes, which can somehow, they can live, they can survive in oxygen. Okay, and reproduction, as I said, is mostly asexual, like binary fission, and sometimes it can be sexual reproduction. As I said, in experiments, certain experiments, such as genetic engineering, where you need the plasmid and everything, that is when you go for sexual reproduction. There are two types, as transformation, conjugation, and transduction. Okay, mostly used in genetic engineering experiments. Okay, so now we jump on to kingdom protista. Protista, if, if uh, this thing monera is huge, protista is almost same. It's also huge. Okay, there are so many, there are around 16 phyla. 
16 phylum in 16 phylum 16 different categories after kingdom protista there are 16 categories you think how huge it is how many kinds of organisms are in protista group okay so all unicellular you can be organic organisms see this is where the difference lies that was prokaryote bacteria is promonera was prokaryote this is eukaryote Okay, so the term protista was first used by Ernest Haeckel, Sir Ernest Haeckel, as I said, he only, he was the one who said, okay, make a protista group, because they are not similar. Okay, not everybody can go into Monera group. They are different, so let's just make a different group, that is protista. Okay, and forms a link between the other kingdoms of fungi, plants and animals. There's like a linkage thing. Okay, they're linking, they're linking, it's like a flow kind of a thing. We have Monera, we have protista, we have fungi, then plants and animals according to its complications, according to its complicated levels. Okay, so kingdom protista is an important phase in early evolution. Very first protist was pro probably, see, 1.7 billion years ago, protistas were growing. 1.7 billion years ago, that is so long. Okay, protista is very large, as I said, 16 phylas or 16 phylums, 16 different categories after kingdom protista you have 16 16 categories okay and some they they are mostly they are found and sometimes they become aquatic ecosystem they are producers in aquatic ecosystems some are very dangerous such as protozoas such as uh, plasmodium falciparum they cause malaria or different different categories okay so see now they are simple unicellular and eukaryotic now most of the protists they live in water some in moist soil and some even in the body of humans and plants. Again, huge, huge difference between some living in water, some living in air, some living in human body, some living in some other animal's body, all different. Okay, so these organisms have a membrane-bound nucleus, endomembrane system, mitochondria, cellular respiration, and some have chloroplasts also. So these are properly developed. They are eukaryotes and they are, their cells are properly developed okay now nuclei contain multiple dna strands and the number of nucleotides is significantly less say so have they have multiple new dna strands and they have number of nucleotides it's significantly less they're lower organisms no so not a lot of dna and rna and everything okay not a lot of variations in those things okay and respiration there is cellular respiration is the primary aerobic process but some living in moist soil underneath uh, or in digestive tracts are facultative anaerobes. Depends. It depends on their characteristics. They can go for oxygen. They can live without oxygen also. See, so many different kinds, no? Of course, they'll have difference between them. So, this is how to move. Okay. This is a flagella. It is like a whip-like structure. If you have seen whip, if you have seen Indiana Jones, Okay, the movie Indiana Jones, what you can see there, he has a whip. So similarly, this is also a whip. So they move, they thrash and they move forward. That is how protistas move. Okay, so locomotion is often by flagella or cilia. And it's like a whip-like action. Okay, nutrition include heterotropic and autotropic. Heterotropic we know, heterotropic is for Heterotropic is does not depend on like sorry one second sorry sorry so heterotropic is depends on other organisms for food. And autotropic is makes their own food. Okay, reproduction, some reproduce sexually and others reproduction reproduce asexually. Okay, and some protists are pathogens of both plants and animals. For example, plasmodium falciparum. Okay, there should be nitrilics. If it's not there, just put a underline. Okay. And Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax. Okay, these are some um, examples for protozoas which can actually cause 
ओ हाय के डाइस मैम आपने मुझे पहचाना मैं साइंस आंसर की वाली वीडियो में आई थी हाँ हाँ आपको पहचान लिया मैंने पहचान लिया जरूर थैंक यू आने के लिए लेकिन आप तो बायोलॉजी क्लास में नहीं आने वाले थे आज तो हम लोग बायोलॉजी पढ़ रहे हैं ठीक है वैसे कुछ नहीं बायोलॉजी पढ़ सकते हैं बायोलॉजी पढ़ने में बहुत मजा आता है हो सकता है बहुत सारे न्यूमेरिकल्स न्यूमेरिकल्स नहीं है लेकिन बहुत मजा आता है बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिलता है ठीक है तो रह जाओ अगर रहना है तो रह जाओ थोड़ा सा सीख लो थोड़ा क्वेश्चन हम लोग डिस्कस करने वाले हैं अगर रहना चाहते हो तो रह जाओ ठीक है ओके सो नाउ लास्ट इज किंगडम फंजेट सो प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स विल डू इट लेटर ठीक है एस एस टी का पढ़ पढ़ के बोर्ड हो गई अच्छा एस एस टी का एग्जाम है ना कल ठीक है को अच्छा कोई बात नहीं एस एस टी का पढ़ पढ़ के लेकिन एग्जाम तो छोड़ो मत ठीक है एस एस टी पढ़ना है तो पढ़ लो ठीक से एस एस टी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है अच्छे मार्क्स अच्छे से लिख के आओगे तो अच्छे मार्क्स भी मिलेंगे ठीक है आए हो तो दस मिनट रुक जाओ उसके बाद फिर से एस एस टी पढ़ लेना ठीक है सो फाइ ग्रुप ऑफ ऑर्गेनिजम फ्रॉम एयर वॉटर लैंड टू दर ऑल्सो फाउंड इन प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल फंजाई लाइट बैक्टीरिया आर फाउंड एवरीवेयर हर जगह मिलता है ओके सो सम फंजाई आर माइक्रोस्कोपिक एंड अदर्स आर गार्गन टू वन सी गार्गन टू वन मींस बेसिकली इट्स वेरी बिग बहुत बड़ा होता है ठीक है सो दिस इज गार्गन टू वन ओके मोस्ट एक्सटेंडिंग ओवर अ थाउजेंड एकर्स इवन द फंजाई अपीयर लाइक प्लांट्स एंड इन फैक्ट क्लोजली रिलेटेड टू एनिमल्स बहुत इतना थाउजेंड एकर्स तक बड़ा वाला ये हो जाता है फंजाई मिल जाता है ठीक है सो फंजाई हैव ग्रेट इकोनॉमिक इंपॉर्टेंस एंड शो ग्रेट डाइवर्सिटी इन मॉर्फोलॉजी एंड हैबिटेट सो इतना सारा देर आर सो मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ फंजाई दे जस्ट गो लाइक डिफरेंट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ये में रहते हैं एनवायरमेंट में रहते हैं कुछ बहुत बड़े होते हैं कुछ बहुत छोटे भी होते हैं ठीक है एंड मोर देन सेवेंटी थाउजेंड स्पीशीज ऑफ फंजाई Have been recognized and organisms of kingdom fungi include mushrooms, smuts, yeast, puffballs, smuts, truffles, morels, molds. Oh, there are n number of things in the fungi, starting from mushrooms, molds, yeast, slime balls. Everything is a kind of a fungi. Okay, and since there are so many types, there are they also have different kinds of uh, uh, characteristics also. Okay, some differently they grow. Some they differently reproduce, so all different different. Okay, so fungi are eukaryotic, non-vascular, and non-motile. Non-motile. ये याद रखना. Non-motile क्यों? क्योंकि they do not move. Okay, the growth rate of fungi is slower than that of bacteria. Bacteria every twenty to fifteen minutes they divide with the help of binary fission. Fungi on the other hand. they do divide it's not that they do not divide very fast or something but it is way slower it's way slower than bacteria okay fungi grows best in acidic environment and the kingdom fungi consists of both unicellular unicellular means one cell ek hi cell ma'am please ntsc ke liye help kar to deleted syllabus bhi aayega ha of course deleted syllabus ntsc ka alag chakka ठीक है जो हम लोगों ने अभी तक एनटीएससी का लास्ट ईयर किया था हम लोगों ने एनटीएससी का प्रिपरेशन सबके साथ ठीक है तो इस बार भी देखते हैं कुछ एनटीएससी के लिए भी प्रिपेयर करेंगे और हाँ एनटीएससी में एनटीएससी से तो सीबीएसई का एग्जाम है नहीं तो एनटीएससी में सब कुछ नाइन्थ स्टैंडर्ड से टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड से सब कुछ से आएगा और क्वेश्चन बहुत एक्चुअली में टफ होते हैं ठीक है बहुत ईजी नहीं होते हैं क्योंकि उसके साथ बहुत कुछ लिंक रहता है ना कॉलेज लेवल एंड एवरी सो इसीलिए एन को तो अगर आपने बोला है तो देखते हैं कुछ करते हैं एनटीएससी का भी शुरू करते हैं हम लोग ठीक है तो नाउ लाइक प्लांट्स एंड रिएक्शन Okay, now this person, fungi, they have a different structure. Okay, so if this is their cell wall, they have special chitin molecules. Chitin is a kind of a sugar. So these yellow yellow things, you know, they are actually chitin in nature. 
ओके पता नहीं कब होगा एन बोला जा रहा है कि कब से कब 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 से होगा होगा पर कब ये नहीं पता होगा 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 तुम लोग एग्जाम्स दे दो ठीक है उसके बाद एन का भी निकलेगा और हम लोग भी पढ़ाते हैं हम लोग भी एन टी के लिए पढ़ाते हैं चिंता की कोई बात नहीं है क्लासेस फ्री भी रहते हैं तुम अगर चाहती हो तो डाउनलोड भी कर सकती हो ठीक है हम लोग फाउंडेशन भी कर रहे हैं तो वेट करो थोड़ा सा देखते हैं कब तक निकलता है ना ठीक है Kingdom fungi. This is how they reproduce. Okay, so cell wall is composed, as I said, of chitin. It's like a sugar molecule. The vegetative body of the fungi may be unicellular or composed of microscopic threads called hyphae. So this is how they look. Okay, and they have. Okay, these structures, these thread-like structures, with the help of what they grow, is known as Hyphae, okay. They have a heterotrophic mode of nutrition. Few species are saprophytes. Saprophytes, we know this. Saprophytes are something which depend on dead, decayed animals for nutrition. Okay. Some fungi are parasitic, but some are symbionts. Parasitic means I, if I am a parasite, although I am not, if I am a parasite, I will depend on somebody else for my nutrition. And symbionts. I, uh, me, if I am a if I am a fungi and I am a symbiont, I will live in a mutualistic relationship with some other organism. Okay, so we can live in a symbiotic relationship with algae and blue green algae, like blue. They are called lichens. So when I am a fungi and I am in a symbiotic relation, a mutual relationship with an algae, so now that kind of thing is called a lichen. Okay, and. Reproduction in fungi is both by sexual and asexual means. Asexual reproduction takes by spores. As I said, this is a suppose this is a fungi. So these are spores. Okay, and some some other they have gametic copulation, somatic copulation, spermatization, almost like plants. Okay, where there are sperms, it goes to an ovum, it divides, zygote is there is fertilization, zygote is formed and everything. Okay, so that is also that kind of reproduction can also be seen in fungi. So both in every case there is an asexual reproduction, there is a sexual reproduction also. Okay, so let's jump into questions and then we can leave for today. Okay, so the question is, which among the following are smallest living cells, you know, without a definite cell wall, pathogenic to plants as well as animals and can survive without oxygen? पता है केडाइज जी आपको पता है क्या क्या है ये मैंने अभी क्लास के स्टार्ट में ही बोला था कि एक ऐसा माइक्रोस्कोप है माइक्रोस्कोपिक ऑर्गेनिज्म है, which is very which is related to somewhat to ओके okay, अभी नहीं बताती हूँ ठीक है सो इट इज रिलेटेड टू सम वेरी माइक्रोस्कोपिक ऑर्गेनिज्म एंड इट इज वेरी प्रॉब्लमैटिक ओके दे आर वेरी स्मॉल बट दे डिवाइड फ्यूरियसली एंड दे कॉज अ लॉट ऑफ इन्फेक्शन फॉर प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स एंड स्टाफ तो उसका आंसर है अगर आप लोगों को नहीं पता तो इट इज माइकोप्लाज्मा Okay, so smallest living being. I'm not talking. I'm not considering virus, though. So smallest living being. Okay, virus we are not considering because virus, no, is dependent on a host. Virus in itself is not a living being. Okay, it is just a protein which, when goes into a host, becomes a living being. Okay, living. It's like a parasite. So that's why we don't consider virus as a living being. Okay, so we are considering mycoplasma. Which is very very problematic. Okay, causes a lot of diseases. See, mycoplasma. This is how they look. This is how they look. There are lipoprotein membrane, RNA, DNA, ribosome, cellular protein. Simple cell, but very dangerous. Okay. Next, a dikaryon is formed when meiosis is arrested. The two haploid cells do not fuse immediately. Cytoplasm does not fuse. None of the above. So these questions, no, are actually neat from neat E by two. Okay, so these questions have come from are coming directly from the neat previous year question papers. Okay, so meiosis is arrested. Two haploid cells do not fuse. So what basically is dikaryon? So let's see. 
So this is what dicaryon means. What happens? The two haploid cells do not fuse immediately. So what is happening? So haploid cells means gametes. Okay. So there is dicaryon mitosis septum fusion, but they do not fuse immediately. They are not fusing. That causes dicaryon. Okay. Next, which of the following pairs come under the group of chrysophytes? Diatoms and euglena, euglena and trypanosoma, diatoms and desmids, coenulyx and desmids. So, which comes under chrysophyte? Which comes under protista? Okay, so let's see what the answer is. The answer is diatoms and desmids. Diatoms and desmids are a type of Okay. Next, which of the group of fungi is commonly known as imperfect fungi? So you have to see which of these phycomycetes, ascomycetes, uh, basidiomycetes, and deuteromycetes. Which is an imperfect fungi? Anyone wants to try? Kedaiz, do you know what it is? What is imperfect fungi? Is it? Is it? So imperfect fungi because they have some uh, exam, they have some characteristics of fungi, but but they are not basically not everything is related. It's not it's they are they are different. They are like half and half. They have some characteristics of fungi, but not all of them. That's why they are imperfect fungi. So the answer here is deuteromycetes. So deuteromycetes is imperfect fungi because sexual stages are not observed in them. For example, alternilia, collaterotricum. This, this is how a deuteromycetes looks. Okay, ma'am, screen thodi blur hai, kuch saaf nahi dik raha. Haan kya? Blur hai? Achha? Thik hai, kuch lighting ka problem hoga. Hum log next class tak solve kar denge. Abhi to bad case, ma'am, solve nahi kar sakta. Mere ko utna technical, utna zyada nahi pata ki kaise camera ko set kare. To next class tak dekhte hai, hai na? Okay, so this is deuteromycetes. Kya hota hai? Deuteromycetes is imperfect because it does not follow sexual reproduction. Okay. Flagellation in euglena is euglena. Again, a type of protista. See, this you should notice. Thik hai? Ki euglen, uh, protista ka question every year they repeat. Out of monera protista fungi. Fungi ka bhi hota hai repeat. But neat me protista is very important. It's actually a huge part. Protista ka khud hi, it's a very huge thing. And questions tend to repeat every year. Okay. So flagellation and euglena is unflagellation and stichonematic, isocont and whiplash type, heterocont and whiplash type, heterocont and stichonematic. So, so it is heterocont and stichonematic. Q bhi bol deti hu main. Stichonematic, the mastogenemes are present on one side of the flagella. Kuch aisa dikta hai. This is how the flagella looks in euglena. Okay, and heterocont, because the name heterocont now refers to the characteristic forms of these cells, which typically have two unequal, so two unequal flagella hota hai. Okay, so two unequal flagella hota hai, isili an euglena me, so that is why it is heteropont and stichonematic. Okay, so that's it for today. Tab se padha rahi hu, 40 minutes se padha rahi hu. Koi to dekh raha hai ki daiji, thank you aane ke liye. Okay, so ham log ye class every Monday, Tuesday, Friday karne ka try karte hain. कभी कभी छूट जाता है लेकिन मोस्ट ऑफ द डेज हम लोग आते हैं ठीक है अगर आप लोगों को आने का मन है आ सकते हो पढ़ने का मन है पढ़ सकते हो बट दिस इज नीट लेवल के लिए होता है हम लोग नीट के लिए प्रिपेयर कर रहे हैं तो थोड़ा बहुत आके हम लोग देखते हैं कि अगर हेल्प कर सकते हैं किसी भी वे में हम लोग हेल्प कर सकते हैं ओके मैम कैन यू प्लीज हेल्प इन करियर ऑप्शन पी के बाद वॉट कैन आई परस यू Ma'am, I want to learn Kathak सिंस टेन ईयर्स आई लव वेस्टर्न डांस टू एंड आई एम सिंगर टू सी बेटा तुमको क्या पढ़ना है अगर BCM लिया है तो इंजीनियरिंग तो काफी अच्छा है IIT JEE के लिए प्रिपेयर करो 
बहुत ही अच्छा ऑप्शन है आई ना भी मिले एन भी मिले तो भी अच्छा है इंडिया में बहुत अच्छे अच्छे इंस्टीट्यूट है गवर्नमेंट वाले इंस्टीट्यूट है बहुत कुछ है कर सकती हो और रहा बात कथक वेस्टर्न डांस एंड सिंगिंग दीज आर ऑल्सो वेरी नाइस ऑप्शन यू कैन ऑल्सो परस्यू देम अलॉन्ग विथ योर स्टडीज यू कैन ऑल्सो परस्यू दीज थिंग्स लाइक डांसिंग एंड सिंगिंग ऑल्सो विथ दैट यू कैन एक्चुअली गेट लॉट ऑफ लाइक हेल्प फ्रॉम कॉलेज इफ यू आर गोइंग सी कैन आई क्रैक आई आई टी विदाउट कोचिंग हो सकता है अगर तुम में है तुम में दम है अगर तुमको पता है कि यू हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ नॉलेज कि विदाउट कोचिंग तुमको आई आई टी क्रैक करना है सी योर केपेबिलिटीज ओनली यू नो वी डोंट नो वी आर योर टू हेल्प ओके सो यू हैव टू डिसाइड कि तुम में वो केपेबिलिटी है कि नहीं ओके सो अगर तुमको लगता है कि कर सकते हो तो करो ओके जान लगा के करो बट मैम मैंने सुना है कि नहीं होता है है ना नहीं होता है सी बहुत हाई लेवल है ठीक है जो है वो आईआईटी प्रिपरेशन आईआईटी आई आई टी कुछ भी मेडिक मेडिकल भी है मुझे ये एडवांस मुश्किल है ऑफ कोर्स है क्योंकि उसके लिए उसके बाद तुमको बहुत अच्छा इंस्टीट्यूट में जाने को मिलेगा सो क्वेश्चन एंड बहुत बहुत सारे बच्चे हैं उतनी सीट्स होते नहीं हैं तो बेस्ट को ही सिलेक्ट करेंगे इसीलिए थोड़ा सा हाई लेवल होता है बट आई एम श्योर अगर तुमको चाहिए अगर तुमको पता है कि तुम में केपेबिलिटी है तो करो ना तो करो प्रिपेयर करने का स्टार्ट करो स्टार्ट करो अगर मुश्किल लगता है तब कोचिंग तब कुछ हेल्प ले लो पहले स्टार्ट करो ठीक है और बड़ा बात कथक वेस्टर्न डांस तुम किसी भी कॉलेज में जाओगी वो कहीं पे भी जाओगी तुमको हमेशा सपोर्ट मिलेगा डांस करना हो सिंग करना हो कहीं पे भी जाओगी तुमको कॉलेज से सपोर्ट मिलेगा कॉलेज से प्रोत्साहन मिलेगा ठीक है मैं मैम एक और डाउट है हाँ बोलो 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 और क्या डाउट है चलो मैं वेट कर रही हूँ मेरा और एक क्लास भी है लेकिन देखते हैं क्या डाउट है आपका क्या डाउट है बोलो बोलो अरे किटा इस जी थोड़ा जल्दी टाइप कीजिए प्लीज ओके फिलहाल तो पता नहीं उनका डाउट कहाँ गया ओके मैम माय फ्रेंड इज टेकिंग फिट जी क्लासेस बट उसमें ये भी इलेवेंथ और ट्वेल्थ का ही पढ़ाते हैं सी कहीं पे भी कहीं पे भी जाओ वहां पे इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ का ही पढ़ाएंगे शुरुआत में इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ का ही पढ़ाएंगे ठीक है तुमको डायरेक्टली आई के लिए नहीं भेज देंगे तो हर जगह में हम लोग बेसिक से ही स्टार्ट करते हैं तुम देखो ना मैं भी बेसिक से पढ़ा रही हूँ क्योंकि बेसिक स्ट्रांग होना चाहिए तो कहीं पे भी जाओ बेसिक से ही स्टार्ट करते हैं उसके बाद हाई लेवल में जाएंगे एकदम अचानक से आप लोगों को हाई लेवल में नहीं भेज सकते ना तो बेसिक से स्टार्ट करते हैं उसके बाद हाई लेवल जाते हैं ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म साइट की कोचिंग देते हैं सो क्या वो फिर क्लासेस रिप्लेस कर सकता है या आपको डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा ना कि आप कहाँ पे जाना चाहते हो आपको अगर फिर जाना है कहीं पे भी जाना है ठीक है वो आपको डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा कि आपको क्या बेस्ट ऑप्शन लगता है ठीक है और कुछ और कुछ सवाल है ठीक है तो आज के लिए इतना ही आज के लिए इतना ही रखते हैं अगर आपको और भी डाउट्स हैं तो वापस आओ क्लास के लिए और ज्यादा डाउट सॉल्व करेंगे सर मैम सबको लेके आ जाएंगे और आपके डाउट सॉल्व करेंगे ठीक है रिसर्च करना पड़ेगा ऑफ कोर्स अरे अपने लाइफ में रिसर्च करके ही आगे बढ़ते हैं लोग नहीं तो क्या रिसर्च करना है पढ़ो ठीक है क्या चाहिए खुद सोचो पढ़ो और फिर जाओ ओके थैंक यू सो मच एवरी वन अच्छी नेक्स्ट क्लास बाय बाय